Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Discovering Multifamily podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Anthony Scandariato with Red Knight Properties. And today we have a special guest here with us, referred to us by a great friend of ours, Brad St. Ange with InvestNext. Shout out to Brad. He owes me a beer for that. And uh, Aaron Palushai. And Aaron Palushai is the uh, founder of Palush Properties and Palush Capital. And he develops and manages different multifamily properties. Uh, believe it or not, in the metro Detroit area, we have a lot of people that see some pros and cons of Detroit. So we're going to talk about uh, why he invests in those areas. And he's developed a few ground up projects. And that's what he's been focusing on, uh, rather than buying existing uh, as cash flowing assets. And uh, we were talking a little bit before about the powers of refinancing out of a development project, and kind of, you know, crystallizing or, or capitalizing all the value that you created. And uh, he used to be a, a pro hockey player. So we'll talk about why he transitioned. Um, I think he was in Sweden, right? And, uh, you know, he was there for you know about 12 years. So very interesting story and definitely excited to have him on my show. Thanks for coming on, Aaron. Thank you for having me. Great. So kind of talk about uh, your experience. I mean, you're a pro hockey player uh, for 12 years in a different country um, and now you're investing in the U.S. and doing development deals. Kind of talk about why. Yeah, so um, I played my first six years. I played in North America, played on a couple different NHL teams um, and then played in the minors um, for uh, a few years here. My career um, took me to Europe the last six years, um, Russia, Belarus, Sweden and Switzerland. So I actually played in Croatia for a few months as well. So traveled all over the world, um, been very blessed and fortunate to um, have had a long, long career in our, um, in, in pro hockey over 10 years is a pretty long career. So um, have traveled all over the world, um, fortunate to be able to live in, in a lot of different places in the US and Canada and all over the world. So, Excellent. Yeah, it sounds like, you know, pretty well traveled, but you are investing in one area and that's the Metro Detroit area. So what gravitated you to there? Yeah, so grew up in um, Metro Detroit area, just outside of Ann Arbor. Um, I have my, my team um, uh, is there, boots on the ground there. My, my dad's actually our, our GC for the company. So he has his network of, of subs. Um, so it was a, a, the transition um, from hockey to real estate developing um, actually happened a couple years um, uh, before I uh, stopped playing hockey. So um, the last couple of years, I would buy some properties, um, sat on them, and then it was, it was time to start developing them. Built some spec homes with my dad. We uh, did some commercial properties. He was in the um, restaurant industry his whole life, so didn't really scale to the um, real estate develop, development full time. Um, so my last couple of years pro, decided to, uh, to really focus in on that. Um, where there's a need for housing in the Metro Detroit area, newer housing, um, specifically like you know, the Ann Arbor area, north of Ann Arbor, um, where we're focusing on. Um, it's a great market, um, great schools, it's a great place to live. So um, we're, we're focusing on that. And it's been really, really exciting. Well, that's great. So you grew up there. So you're really investing in a market that you know. And I think that's important because a lot of people have shiny object syndrome and they want to invest in all different states that they've never been to. They just read in the news that, oh, there's pop <laughs> nice population growth there. Well, have you ever been there? Well, no, but I want to invest there. Um, so I think that's important to invest, you know, at least starting out with, with what you know and where you know. So that's pretty cool. Um, talk to us about uh, some of the development projects that you were working on and some of the initiatives that you are implementing on all your deals. Yeah, so the uh, 12 unit that we developed um, in South Lyon, Michigan, is just about 20 minutes north of Ann Arbor. Um, this is the first uh, ground up development, the multifamily side of, of things. Uh, and that's been going really well. Um, we have some smart home technology in that with the Ecobee thermostats. We're transitioning to um, smart, smart locks on that property as well. Um, down the street, we have a six unit that'll be finished in about three to four months. And we'll have solar on that EV charging um, in the garages and then full um, full tech uh, package on, on all of those. Our big thing is um, the frictionless, frictionless experience from when a resident calls in um, to lease our property, um, to pay uh, to pay their bill, um, their rental bill online, being able to have kind of one, one bill instead of having um, a utility bill and a, a water bill. Um, if we can 
it's a little upfront cost to have the uh, the solar panels, but I think um, you're able to charge a little bit more on rent just because of that convenience for the residents, um, and, and they really like that. Uh, we're just we're doing it, and um, we're getting some good feedback on our six unit. We are going to implement it on some larger, um, specifically a 74 unit, actually uh, close to the other 18 units. No, that's great. And so you developed a few smaller properties, and you know while you were at you know playing for the NHL, and then it sounds like you're just kind of transitioning out of that to some larger properties. So what made you decide to do that? And were those plots of land land that you've already owned, or are these new acquisitions for you? What or are they land? Are you knocking down buildings and building new? What's the what's your play? Yeah, so the the twelve unit was just a, a vacant parcel that we I and uh, and my my dad um, had our eye on for a little while. Great area, great you know, right downtown, close to park um, that we really like. So we had our eye on that for a while. Um, once it uh, hit the market, we jumped on it pretty quick. Um, the other one was actually uh, had a house on it. Um, tore that down. It was zoned multifamily. We try to stick to uh, acquiring land that is is zoned um, properly. Uh, it. From what we've uh, gathered, it's it's pretty tough to to change the zoning. It could be a, a laborious and, and pretty long um, uh, line of of work to to get the zoning changed. So um, we try to stick with properties that are zoned properly. Um, the seventy four unit property that um, we're, we're, we will be developing close by um, is zoned um, multi use. So we will be putting some commercial frontage on that property as well as uh, seventy four multifamily residential units. Excellent. So it sounds like a nice bite-sized, uh, it's obviously more than 12 units. So that's, that's great. Yeah. Next step up. Um, and it sounds like you got to learn from those other two that you developed a lot too. So, um, and so what's your strategy? You mentioned um, refinancing or do you plan to sell these? What's your you know ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is uh, it's, it's, we look at it like a, you know, a 10, 20, 30 year business. Um, we're not trying to, you know, burn and turn and, and buy and, and sell a bunch of deals um, where there's nothing wrong with that model. Um, it's just, we, we see value in creating and developing properties, um, refinancing at appropriate times, um, having, you know, the loan to value still be um, advantageous, but not, you know, over leveraging. Um, I feel like, when you're uh, when you structure the the refinance with good long term debt, um, you can weather some peaks um, uh, and and drops in the market. And we I I believe we are in um, a little bit of a peak market right now, with the elevated pricing and the in the um, really low cap rates in a lot a lot of the country. So, um, you know, our our philosophy is we have good long term debt. Um, we should be able to weather any storms. Right. And are you able to, what kind of financing are you putting on these development projects in, to start? Because that's a lot different than fixed rate long-term debt. Yeah. Yeah. So we had um, on the 12 unit, we had a um, construction loan with an end mortgage, um, was able to, uh, to, to roll that into um, uh, an end mortgage. And I think it was a learning experience because I had toyed with uh, getting just a construction loan without an end mortgage. Um, and then opted to have that security of the end mortgage because you never know development it could take especially with COVID it could take 12 months it could take 18 months or longer depending on the size of the property um, but I was able to get a um, end mortgage on that ended up refinancing out of that end mortgage um, with a low uh, yield maintenance um, uh, it was essentially not much of a prepayment penalty so fortunately was able to uh, get some agency debt on the 12 unit and that um, you know long-term debt there was uh, super advantageous so but when you're acquired when you acquire the land are you but paying cash and then you're yeah yep yep yeah so yeah so we we bought the uh the land cash um sat on it for about two years um before we actually started developing it so um it's, uh, the the window from when we purchased the land uh we got it at a good good price um, to actually having the units up and, and rent in, rented out, um, probably like a three-year window there. And you mentioned you're in California and you're investing, at least you moved to California, I'm assuming, and you're investing in Michigan. Is there, you know, you mentioned your father, is he in Michigan kind of overseeing the, the projects or what, what's your team look like in boots on the, with boots on the ground? Yeah, yeah, my dad is there with his uh, his team of subs. Um, so uh, he's there. He's uh, managing all the um, all the projects going on. Um, 
boots on the ground. I do a lot of, you know, emailing, setting, setting uh, meetings up with um, city planners, um, with the technology uh, we have at, at our fingertips right now. It's super exciting because, you know, we're building a property management um, company out. And for now, we're just going to manage our properties. But um, I just love and I'm so, so passionate about the giving the user and the resident a frictionless experience and having it just really easy. We're implementing um, all self-guided tours and all of our properties moving forward. Um, being able to go see um, a, prop, a, a unit, um, an apartment home and you know, decide to rent or not rent it without this you know, pushy salesman behind you, um, you know, kind of breathing down your neck um, with, the, with the smart locks um, and uh, some other companies out there that actually will um, you know, implement like Google Maps or Apple Maps. So to be able to like ingrain, for example, they'll be able to like, you know, walk you to the unit um, through your through your smartphone, give you the code to, to enter the unit, um, tour it. And then you know, if, it's, if it works for you and your family uh, to rent it, great. So it's just, it's super exciting with all this technology. Yeah, no, absolutely for the entire industry. And when you're dealing with all the smart technology, you're typically targeting a, I don't want to say higher income demographic, but, you know, maybe middle income to high, what's your demographic um, archetype look like in those markets? Um, I, I've, I've tried to, you know, implement some of that technology um, in a couple of our properties and unfortunately it didn't work, but every market is different and obviously you're building. So um, I'm assuming, you know, you are charging probably top of the market type of rents, uh, but correct me if I'm wrong. I'm just curious. Yeah, so what we've done, we, we've developed, you know, A, B class um, properties. So yeah, to, you know, relatively top of the uh, market rents. Um, that being said, uh, it, interesting to hear that it didn't work out um, in some of your properties, because I just think with the cost of all this smart tech, um, and pretty much everyone in the in the country having a smartphone, um, we're going to keep implementing it in, in our A and B ground up developments. Um, we haven't acquired anything as of yet. Uh, so we'll see if we're going to, we're going to try to uh, implement the solar and, um, and the smart home tech in, in acquired assets. Um, so we'll see when that time comes. Yeah. It's usually we see um, issues with more of the elderly population that live in our buildings and they're not used to, they still have a flip phone and, you know, we have, if there's a good percentage of, uh, them at our buildings it's, it's really hard to implement that's that's the challenge that yep. we've had. but again it comes down to your market so it sounds like you know your market um, and so what's what's the plan in the horizon uh, for 2022 you mentioned the uh, was it 76 unit that you're, you're uh, building seven, 74 units yeah 74 yep. unit so, um, you have any other projects outside of that we do there's a there's a um, uh, a property about um, 20 minutes north uh, that we're partnering um, with a guy on uh, that's a 48 unit um, uh, pro, uh, pro, uh, development. Um, and then there's one about 30 minutes from there uh, and that's an 88 unit. So we have a couple of projects in the pipeline. Um, it, they should work out uh, pretty staggered. So um, should be able to get crews from one to another. Um, that's at least the plan right now. We'll see what happens. That's great. And really impressed to hear you know, was it a tough transition from athlete to real estate or was it kind of seamless because you had some family members in the business and, you know, you were doing it kind of part time like your last two years in, in uh, hockey? Yeah, yeah. It, I wouldn't say it was seamless, but um, it definitely helped to have some experience in building some spec homes, like slowly transitioning um, to it full time uh, the last couple of years um, definitely made it easier. Uh, still really, really new in the space in this industry. Um, it's a long, long-term game and, and business for us. Um, so looking forward to implementing all this smart home tech and, um, and the environmental um, you know, stewardship that we're implementing on the six unit and, and the 74 unit will have solar. And it's just what we're able to, like, for example, the six units, um, there'll be 49,532 gallons um, of gasoline saved by going solar over the life of the property. Um, 18,731 trash, trash bags uh, of waste recycled. Um, it's just stuff that um, you could not only feel great um, giving residents a uh, a new apartment home to live in, but also um, to, to help uh, the environment. So it's we're pretty fortunate to be able to implement that in some of our new builds. 
That is great. And so how can my listeners uh, find you, reach out to you, connect with you? What's the best way? Yeah, um, LinkedIn, um, Instagram, A Palouch, P-A-L-O-O-S-H, and then um, palouchcapital.com. Uh, we're finishing that website up. Uh, there'll be a lot of informational content. Um, we'll be uh, rolling out a podcast here in quarter one of, of 22. Um, and then Aaron at palouchcapital.com. Those are the best ways to get in touch with me. Excellent. We'll have a link to Aaron's uh, so, you know, social media that he mentioned, as well as his website and eventual podcast. So definitely looking forward to listening to that. And if you liked what you heard and or saw today, please give us a rating and review on iTunes because it helps Aaron and myself get our message out to a greater audience. It's just the way the algorithm works. So we really appreciate that. And feel free to connect with Aaron. And Aaron, hope to have you on again soon. Anthony, thank you very much uh, for having me on the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you.